Yes guys, how's everyone doing? Welcome back to the Dugout Football Channel where it is time for match week number 14 of the 2020-21 Premier League season. Now, I do realise that I am recording this uh, before Aston Villa against Burnley and Sheffield United against Manchester United. Now, because of this, I will have to do the scoring, uh, the highest scorer of match week 13 and match week 14 in the next predictions video the one before christmas so i will be doing that um yeah i'll be doing that in the next video uh obviously out of my control because obviously with the with the fixtures coming in thick and fast uh with the game starting on saturday that is the situation that i find myself in so unfortunately there won't be any high scores this week uh in this week's predictions but there will be in the next prediction so there we go so uh to kick things off we have crystal palace against liverpool the last five between the sides was other than five wins to liverpool the last result was a 2-1 win to liverpool crystal palace getting a 1-1 draw with west ham last night um, I have to say, I, I watched a wee bit of this game, and it has to be said, Palace did play very, very well in the first half. West Ham got back into in the second half, a wonderful goal from Sebastian Haller. Absolutely fantastic strike from him, overhead kick as well. Uh, so, and uh, Christian Benteke is suspended for this game against Liverpool. He won't be able to face his former club because he got two yellow cards. It has to be said, you know, the... I mean, if we're getting red cards for that, you know, football is definitely going soft. So you'd, you'd have to say for sure. Uh, Liverpool... 2-1 win over Spurs, um, yeah, very, very well deserved, absolutely battered Spurs from start to finish, yes, Spurs, you know, you know, hit the post, um, Liverpool had more possession, it was a very, very good win in the end for Liverpool, and uh, yeah, Firmino, uh, hopefully that will kick start his uh, Premier League uh, season for sure, but uh, yeah, we'll see, see, what, uh, see what happens for sure, so... Really hard one to call because Crystal Palace are in pretty good form. Liverpool uh, obviously getting a, a, a win last night against Spurs. Really, really difficult one to call. Liverpool won the last five games. I think this is going to be a very close one. Uh, I'm going to go Crystal Palace to nick a goal because they seem to always seem to nick a goal against Liverpool at Selhurst Park. But I'm going to go for Liverpool to win this one. I'm going Crystal Palace 1, Liverpool 2. I'm going to go for it. And now we have a very interesting encounter between Southampton and Manchester City. The last five between the sides resulted in one win to Southampton and four wins to Manchester City. The last result was a 1-0 win to Southampton. Now Southampton getting a 1-1 draw with Arsenal. Theo Walcott of all people getting the goal for Southampton on his return to the Emirates Stadium. Very, very well taken goal it was as well. Really, really, uh, very, very impressive finish from Walcott. And to be honest, Southampton did, you know, play really, really well. You know, they'll be they'll be feeling a bit hard done by, you know, getting a draw. They would have felt they probably had more chances to win that game as well. But you know, Arsenal are struggling for points, and you know that uh, Southampton. To be fair, Southampton have had a very good season so far, and it's only going to get better for sure. Manchester City, well. 1-1 one, one with West Brom, um, they are badly missing Aguero because Jesus and Sterling can't finish their dinner at all. And that's one thing That's one thing they have. you have to say about Man City is that they are doing playing really well, but they're not getting results. And unfortunately, again, another one where, you know, they had all the ball, had all the possession. They just met a very good um, Sam Johnston in the West Brom goal. And you have to say that Man City were very, very lethargic, just ran out of ideas in the end. But, yeah, it's, it's a, bit of a, a bit of a worry for uh, Man City. So, because of Southampton's good form recently and Manchester City's stuttering form two draws in the last five games i am going to go for southampton to get another win over man city i'm going for southampton two manchester city one there are some really hard games to call in this one but i'm going to go for southampton to win this one two one against manchester city and we have the half past five game we have everton against arsenal the last five between the sides other than three wins to arsenal one win to everton and one draw 
Last result was a nil-nil draw between the sides. Everton, fantastic away win, you have to say, against uh, Leicester City. Mason Holgate and Richarlison getting both of the goals as well. But Everton were absolutely magnificent. Thoroughly deserved the, the win from start to finish. So very, very well-deserved win for Keller and Chilotti's men. Arsenal got a 1-1 draw with Southampton. Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang finally scored a goal. Um... And at least it was, it was at the right end this time, which was very, very good for sure. Um, but it is a good ascent. Arsenal really struggling for form at this moment in time. Everton, a good good win away at Leicester. A good clean sheet as well. Uh, be interesting to see if Robin Olsen starts this game because uh, obviously with uh, you know Pickford getting injured against Chelsea. Um, he obviously sat the game out against Leicester. Will he be put back in? to the game against Arsenal. We'll see what happens. But I'm going to go for an Everton home win. Uh, and I think it's more doom and gloom on the road for Arsenal. And especially Mikel Arteta against the former side. Everton 2, Arsenal 0. I'm going to go for. Uh, Newcastle United against Fulham now. The last five between the sides have resulted in three wins to Newcastle. One draw and one win to Fulham. The last result was a nil-nil draw between the sides. Well, Newcastle United getting beat 5-2 by Leeds United. Not a good performance from Newcastle. Yes, you know, they did take the lead. Leeds equalised and, you know, they took, Leeds took the lead. They managed to equalise again, but unfortunately... Just not good enough there, and uh, this will this will be a very very sore one for Newcastle to take. Five two uh, defeat is quite a quite a horrible defeat as well. Uh, Fulham no no draw with Brighton. Uh, they can feel like they were a wee bit lucky because obviously Brighton had a goal ruled out by VAR, and uh, you know Brighton might have won that game. So oh, really hard one to call again, but. Uh, I don't expect many goals. I don't expect uh, a very good game in this one. I think it's going to be a very narrow win to Newcastle. They do like a 1-0 against Fulham. Actually, three of the last five between the sides have actually been 1-0. So I'm actually going to go for a 1-0 win to Newcastle United. I'm going to go Newcastle United to win this one. 1-0. Now we have Brighton against Sheffield United. And there's only been th two meetings between the sides. And that has been one win to Sheffield United and one draw. The last result of a 1-0 win to Sheffield United. Well, Brighton getting off the back of a 0-0 draw with Fulham. Should have probably won that game. Adam Lallana's goal was ruled out by VAR. Uh, it's And obviously, they did change their goalkeeper and it got a clean sheet as well. So, does Sanchez keep his place or does Ryan come back in to the start in 11 for Sheffield United game? We shall see what happens. Sheffield United, uh, obviously, they are in action against Manchester United this evening. You would probably expect Manchester United to probably beat uh, Sheffield United. So... This is a game the Sheffield United will probably aim to maybe get a point in or maybe, you know, th all three. But it's a really hard one to call, really hard place to go to the Amex as well. Uh, I'm going to go for a very narrow win for Brighton. Brighton 1, Sheffield United 0. I'm going to go for and now we have Tottenham against Leicester City. Both of these sides on the back of defeats in the last game. And the last five between the sides, there was other than four wins to Spurs and one win to Leicester. The last result was a 3-0 uh, win to Tottenham. Yes, Tottenham off the back of a 2-1 defeat to Liverpool. Uh, Song getting the goal as well. Very good. Harry Kane, of all people, missing a free header. In the box, he heads it down and the ball goes over the bar. It was a poor header and he, he has to do better, Harry Kane. Harry Kane for sure. But what what on earth are Tottenham doing at that corner? I mean, come on. I mean, Roberto Firmino hasn't scored in God knows how long. But you have to say that it was poor marking from uh, from Tottenham for that, for that goal. But uh, yeah, Tottenham uh, go back in front of the... Their home fans, well, actually, there won't be any fans because, uh, you know, London's back in, obviously, Tier 3, uh, which is really sad to, to see. So, unfortunately, you know, Tottenham coming off the back of a 2-1 defeat, they will look to bounce back against the Leicester City side, who will definitely be looking to bounce back. 2-0 defeat to Everton. Uh, it has to be said that Everton were much the better team in that game, from dominating from start to finish as well. So... 
Really, really hard one to call. I'm going to go for a Tottenham win in this one, though. Uh, but uh, Leicester City will have to improve their last showing at uh, the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. 3-0 down uh, very, very quickly uh, as well. One goal from Son and two from Harry Kane as well. So, really, really... Uh, they need to definitely improve their last away uh, vi vi visit there. But I'm going to go for a 2-1 win to Tottenham in this one. And now one of the biggest rivalries reignites again. We have Manchester United against Leeds United. These two do not like each other. Oh, do not... Do not miss this fixture. I expect fireworks. I expect lots of probably lots of cards. I probably expect a red card in this game. It has, it has had everything this fixture in the past. And I expect it to be a very good one again. So the last five between the sides have resulted in three wins to Manchester United. One win to Leeds United and one draw. The last result was a 1-1 draw between the sides. Now obviously Manchester United are in action against Sheffield United. You would expect them to win. You would expect them to win. Edison Cavani has been charged now by the FA after, what, three, four weeks of uh, the um, social media post? Absolutely ridiculous how the FA have decided to basically make a decision now when they could have made a decision like two, three weeks ago. You know? So, but I would expect Manchester United to beat uh, Sheffield United this evening. Leeds United, 5-2 win against uh, Newcastle United. Very, very good performance, it has to be said. Bamford, Harrison. If you haven't seen Harrison's goal, go check it out. Absolute pile driver from Jack Harrison. Very, very good finish from Jack Harrison. And it has to be said, this is a very hard one to call because, as I've said, 1-1 one, one draw the last meeting between the sides. I think there will be goals. I'm going to go for a narrow Manchester United win in this one. Manchester United 2, Leeds United 1, I am going to go for. And now we have West Brom, newly managed by Sam Allardyce versus Aston Villa. The last five between the sides have done two wins to West Brom, two wins to Villa and one draw. The last result was a 0-0 draw between the sides. Well, West Brom get a very good 1-1 draw at Manchester City. Uh, had to defend for their lives, but they had a very good Sam Johnston in net who kept them in the game. So that was very, very good for them. And then 24 hours later, they sack Slavan Bilic. <sighs> Look, I, I've had my say on it. I think it was a very, very harsh decision. Yes, you can say that West Brom are 19th in the Premier League. But had Slavan Bilic been given time, I think he would have been able to have turned, turned it around. He wasn't backed in the summer. I kept, I've kept saying this. He wasn't backed in the summer. So, you know, West Brom have decided to change him. And now they've got Sam Allardyce in charge, who is a survival specialist, of course, can he keep West Brom in the Premier League? It's going to be very, very tricky because, as I've said multiple times, this squad is championship quality, so he will need to reinvest in January, and I think he will get money to be backed in January. Aston Villa are about to kick off against Burnley, so... Really hard one to call that one because I would expect Aston Villa to win, but they have lost the last three away at uh, at Villa Park uh, as well. So Midlands Derby, obviously, really really hard one to call a game, but Aston Villa are better away from home than they are at home. So because of that, I am going to go for Aston Villa to pile the pre pile the gloom onto West Brom. It won't be a good start for Sam Allardyce. I'm saying. West Brom 0, Aston Villa 2 in this one. So I'm going to say that as well. Uh, Burnley against Wolves. This is one of the uh, two of the Monday games for sure. What last five between the sides resulted in one win to Burnley, two draws, and two wins to uh, Wolves. The last result was a 1 1 draw between the sides. As I've said, Burnley are playing Aston Villa. Uh, I probably expect Burnley to probably lose that game. So they'll go into that. Wolves game, hoping to, uh, to you know, to do better for sure. Uh, really, really difficult one to call because Wolves coming off the back of a two-one win over Chelsea. Great, great win that one. Um, Podens, Neto, brilliant, absolutely brilliant win for for them as well. Uh, yeah, Wolves have done that to Chelsea in the past and they've managed to do it again. So very, very well done to Wolves for that one. Really hard one to call. Uh, it is a turf moor. You'd expect Burnley to, you know, have most of the, you know, the possession. 
I'm going to say a draw on this one. I'm going to. Uh, this is going to be my only draw of the weekend. Burnley one, Wolves one. I'm going to go for. And we have the final game, my, one of my games of the weekend for sure. It is Chelsea against West Ham. The last five between the sides of the other day. Two wins to West Ham, two draws, and one win to Chelsea. The last result was a 1 0 win to West Ham. Chelsea, two defeats on the spin, both away from home, both at Everton and Wolves. <sighs> well, what can you say? Man management and Frank Lampard has to come into serious question. That managing games when you're when you've got when you have like got a point, you know, you you sit back and allow Wolves onto you, and that's what they did. They, you know, a very good finish from uh, Neto in the end. A really good finish for Wolves. But Chelsea will be kicking themselves. Chelsea were very poor against Wolves, it has to be said. Obviously, Giroud again. I've I've said I've said it for a long, long time now. Olivier Giroud is one of the most underrated strikers on the planet right now. He is. He is. The guy scores goals. The guy scores goals, and he's getting his chance in the Chelsea team, and he's you know he's scoring goals. So you can't really drop him. You can't really drop him. The player you can drop is Timo Werner. Timo Werner is looking a shadow of the player he was at RB Leipzig. Kai Havertz, I don't know what on earth Kai Havertz has, has done to merit a start in this Chelsea team. I think he needs a uh, spell on the bench, in all honesty. I really, really do. West Ham coming off the back of a 1-1 draw with Crystal Palace. They did do the double over Chelsea last season. Uh, let's talk about the Haller overhead kick. Absolutely wonderful overhead kick into the corner of the net. Very, very good for West Ham. So, West Ham did the double over Chelsea last season. Chelsea are sixth, West Ham are seventh. A win for either side takes them above each other. I am going to go for West Ham to win the London derby at Stamford Bridge. Chelsea to lose three on the bounce. Chelsea one, West Ham two. I'm going to go for West Ham to win against Chelsea. Uh, you can see from my predictions that there have been some very bold ones in there. So that is it. That is Match Week 14 done and dusted. As I've said, leave your predictions in the comment section down below. And as I've said, the, the highest scorer will get a shout out in the next video. Hoping to have this video out by midnight tonight. So if that is the case, then we'll obviously get that out for, for you as well. So I'll go for my predictions very, very quickly as well. Crystal Palace 1, Liverpool 2, Southampton 2, Manchester City 1, Everton 2, Arsenal 0, Newcastle United 1, Fulham 0, Brighton 1, Sheffield United 0, Tottenham 2, Leicester City 1, Manchester United 2, Leeds United 1, West Bromwich Albion 0, Aston Villa 2, Burnley 1, Wolves 1, Chelsea 1, West Ham 2. So that is it. That is Match Week 14 done and dusted. And yeah, um, we shall see what happens uh, Match Week 14 Obviously, this is the the match week before the Boxing Day fixtures, and we'll see what happens for sure. So, yeah, lots of fixtures coming up. The big festive period is coming thick and fast, and I'm looking forward to the, the match week 14 games. A lot of hard games to predict, so good luck to everyone. That's what I'll say. Good luck to everyone, for sure. But uh, until next, it's goodbye for me. If you do like this content, please hit that subscribe button. Smash the like on this video as well. And we'll see what happens in match week 14. Some very good games for sure. Southampton Man City, Everton Arsenal, uh, Chelsea West Ham, and of course, Manchester United against Leeds United. Going to be a cracker, and I'm sure we'll, we'll enjoy the football as well. And I'll see you all in the next one. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye for now.